So fiber space, fiber spates, crumb. Oh my God, that's so hard to say. My name is Karen. I am your host. This is the KD Gecko Knits YouTube channel. I'm never sure if I should call it a podcast or a vlog. And people do vlog miss, so they're vlogging every day. And podcast is really audio. And so, what are we here on YouTube? Um, probably we're vlogging, not really you, uh, podcasting. But either way, welcome. And thank you so much to all of my new subscribers on Instagram and here on uh, YouTube. It's touching that you find me entertaining enough to subscribe. And I know there has to be some men out there too. Men, where are you? It would be great to have you guys on here too. All you male knitters, crocheters, fiber artists, you can click the subscribe button too, you know. Thank, thank you so much to those of you who commented on the Garter Ridge tab. I had showed you how I had done it for a couple of shawls. And a few of you said that S Suzanne Bryan has a video on how she does the Garter Tab cast on. So I, uh, I will link that below because I watched it and it is, it's really great. And I am familiar with Suzanne Bryan. And I should have thought, hello, I should have thought to um, go to her YouTube channel to look for a tutorial on the Garter Tab cast on. It's different than mine, but it is, it is really great. So I'm gonna try that on another shawl. Uh, and mine worked for me. It's just I'm sure others have done my technique where you just go down one or two needle sizes and start. And if you're more curious about it, you can watch episode seven and I talk about it a little more in depth. But anyway, thank you to those of you who did recommend Suzanne Bryan's tutorials because it is super helpful. So I'm back from New York. I have to look at my notes. I'm back from New York and had a great time. The weather was more or less good. Uh, when we got in on one evening that we arrived, it was about 60 degrees, which was quite warm. And it was a little chilly a couple days, but not horrible. We had a little bit of rain, but it, an umbrella. It was really, to me, it was perfect. It was beautiful spring weather, and I was, I was great with that. Uh, so we had a great time. I went to the Andrea Maori Christy Glass event at Murmur in Brooklyn and I will insert, I think I'll do it at the end, I will insert some video footage of that. I took a little bit and it was, ugh, silly me. I talked to Christy afterwards and I'm sure you saw me on her show last week. When I talked to her that day and we went to lunch, I said, gee, I really, I was video recording in the back but I thought, I asked her, I said, would you guys have been okay if I came up front? And I said, I, I, I should have done that to get closer. Oh, well, next time. So Christy and I had a blast. And, of course, you saw the T-shirt that I made. Well, I didn't make the whole T-shirt. I just added the glitter. So you saw that, that I made one for myself and made one for her as her little birthday present. And so everyone was wishing Christy a happy birthday. Uh, so that was fun and Christy and I went out we had lunch and this great little restaurant in her neighborhood and I'm getting so good at the subway you guys I've been to New York three times in the past six months and usually when I'm in New York I pretty much stay on the Upper East and Upper West Side Midtown to Upper East and West Side around the park so I walk because I don't mind two miles to me is nothing to walk 
But because I was, you know, I went to Brooklyn, I went to Queens, I went, you know, I, myself, one of my trips. So I'm, I'm trying to get used to the subway system. And so that's been really great. And I knitted on the subway and unfortunately my husband, sh he was, a <laughs> he didn't always want to take pictures or video of me. And, you know, plus he's not a very good videographer or camera uh, picture taker. Sometimes I have to, you know... I have to look at everything and say, no, no, try again, try again. Oh, well, sh don't tell him. He doesn't like me talking about him. Uh, so that was really great. Oh, and then I saw, uh, I ran into a few ladies at um, a String Thing in Brooklyn and uh, Felicia's store, String Thing, and Ceci was there and Gigi was there and a few other knitters. Um, it was really great. Um, oh, Lewis. Uh, from Brooklyn Boy Knit. So it was really great to run into them. And Cece gave me, she has little stickers now. Let me show you her sticker. Those are her stickers. So if you see Cece at an event, she may give you one of these or ask her for one. I don't know if you can contact her to order one. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, thank you so much, Cece. And let's see what else. Uh, okay, so that is it for the New York. It was, I had to go, oh, and the event. Sorry, I should talk about the event. So the Andrea Maori event, we got there right at the last minute. Um, we went, we tried to get into the Brooklyn Museum. There was a Frida Kahlo exhibit, and I'm a huge fan for 30 years. I've been a huge fan of Frida Kahlo. Unfortunately, there was a, and we tried to time it so that we could go to Murmur right afterwards because they were about two blocks apart. Unfortunately, there was a wedding that Saturday night, so when we arrived at the museum, the Brooklyn Museum, we were told there were no tickets left, they were closing early for the wedding, so we could not see the exhibit that day. So we left, we walked around, we went to String Thing Studio, and then we decided to go get a bite to eat because we knew it would be late after the event, the Christy Glass Andrea Maori event. And they were very, very busy, and I don't remember the name of, of the restaurant. And it was nice. The people there, the service was great. But I think because it was so crowded, our food didn't cut. We waited, and we all, all I ordered was a salad, and my husband had soup. So I don't know why it took so long. But we waited 40 minutes or more, and then we said, gee, and it was about a 15-minute walk from where we were back to Murmur, to the event location. So we had to just grab our food in a bag and carry it into Murmur. And so we, we got in there right as they started. But it was really great. Andrea Maori, of course, is adorable, and Christy was, you know, it was just a lot of fun. So many people were there. That was great. The bad thing is, is I got there late, so I couldn't say hi to too many people. Uh, I saw Danny of Gemma Darling and, of course, Corrado. So I was able to say hi to them. And I saw Miriam from Chelsea Pearls. Um, and then people are texting me, where are you? You know, and it was just... And then we, we left right after the interview. Um... We were there about an hour and 20 minutes, or I'm not sure, maybe an hour. And then uh, we left a little early because my husband was feeling a little so-so. So unfortunately, I did not really get to um, hook up with a lot of the people afterwards, which is too bad. But next time, Rhinebeck, uh, probably Rhinebeck, right? Um, but Andrea Maori is very cute and all her tattoos, and they talked about the tattoos. And I think you guys right, might remember I have a tattoo, a lizard tattoo on my shoulder, which barely shows him or herself or itself, um, because I usually, you know, until spring and summer when you wear uh, a sleeve, um, sleeveless tanks and tank dresses and things. Now, you have probably seen me doing my little jam dance as I always do with my finished objects. I'm about to be high now. Wait, wait a minute. The Ann pullover is finished. Yay! I f so here it is. I'll stand up. I'm going to go out of range. That is the Ann pullover. Hello, hello, hello. 
I used, as I mentioned before, I used Hedgehog Fibers, the sport weight yarn, non superwash in the colorway kimono. I love this colorway. I have it in mohair, I have it in skinny singles. Uh, I think, oh, I'm going to order it in DK because there's a DK pattern I'd like to do. I just love this colorway. First, because blue, I'm a cool, complected person, so cool colors look better on me. And so this blue is a cool color, but it has these little pops of other colors, which is great. So I get a little bit of warm pops of color with the cool colors, and it looks super fab. I love this pullover. I made a few modifications. As I am wont to do, I usually cast on with a needle size one or two sizes smaller than the garment calls for. Did Oh, and no, did, I did not do a gauge swatch because I have made this pattern before. So I just took my, <laughs> you know, I, I looked at my notes because I've told you I keep crazy notes. I looked at my notes. I used fingering weight in the past, so I thought, well, this is a little heavier yarn, not hugely different. At least this one is not, this sport weight is not hugely different from the fingering weight that I used the last time. So I made a few a little modifications, but I always start with this uh, um, one or two size smaller, just to pull the neckline in a little bit. And then I leave a very, very long tail. As you may remember, once I complete a garment and I finish it, I use a slip stitch crochet just to reinforce the neckline and to give it a, uh, I think it gives it a cleaner finished look. So I do that with almost all of my garments. One subscriber had asked me about a slip stitch crochet and there are many videos on how to do it. But if you know how to crochet, you're just, you're not making a new stitch. You're, uh, it just sort of levels out your work and the crochet, you know, you've got your, your knit stitches, your V's on your top of your cast, let's say for here, right, your cast on edge. And so you just go through, and I think I actually went through the back side. I did the slip stitch crochet from the inside of the garment. Usually I do it on the outside, but it depends how easy it is to see where I enter the stitches. So I think on this one I did it from the inside. It was just easier and I did it that way. So I leave a very, very long tail. I estimate about how much I'm going to need to reinforce the neckline. And then I begin my cast on. Uh, and so I just, you know, I leave it there until I'm all done with the garment and then I finish the neckline. Another modification. So, oh, uh, so once all right, so once I do my cast on and I knit a couple of rows with the smaller gauge needle and then I will increase slowly to the needle size that I want to use for the uh, main part of the body and I do that maybe I may knit you know four rows in one size and then increase four or five rows the next size and then I'll increase to the intended needle size. Something else I did with this garment is once I got to, here, I'm going to stand up and show you. So once all of this work is done in here for the yoke, then you have this lace section here for the body, right, for the, the torso area. And I wanted to flare out just a little bit. I wanted it A-lined slightly. So I went up and even bigger, I think I went up to a six or seven needle here. I don't remember, my notes are on Ravelry. But I went up another needle size here so that it would give it a slight flare. <laughs> and that's not all. When I, re when I got to the hem, and you're working this top down, so when I got to the hem, I did not do the hem that was recommended in the pattern. Instead, I wanted my sleeve, my sleeve hem, and my hem, the body hem to match. And it's a fishtail pattern. So I I went up a needle, um, I went up a needle size again once I reached that lace portion. 
so A, that it would flare out a little more, and B, because it was lace work, so I wanted it to open up. And for the lace, I used kimono, the hedgehog kimono mohair. I held it together with a fiber spates, scrumptious lace weight yarn in mid, I think it's called midnight or dark blue or something like that. And I held it together with the um, hedgehog mohair, and that's what I did the hem. So here, I'll show you again, right? The hem here, and then the sleeves. So I did several repeats. I made these slightly longer than the pattern calls for, but I wanted them a little bit longer. And that was that. Uh, so I'm very thrilled. I love this pattern. It is easy if you are new to yoke work, new to lace. This pattern is super, it's well written. It's easy to follow. There aren't 20 pages of directions um, or instructions. It's really a great pattern. And Rachel is super helpful. If you have questions, she's super helpful. So Rachel, oh, here, I'll show you again. So here's the pattern. That's a great knit. Am I going to make it again? Yes, I will. I have been dying to try sort of some neon yarns. So I have the yarn. I don't, oh, you can't see up here. Let me pull it down. Oops, oops, oops. This is kind of a bright yellow. I'm not sure this works with my skin color. It's a little too warm for me, but if I work it into the body. So I've been very anxious to try some sort of sort of neon or um, I'm not sure. I want to incorporate something. I may make another and pullover using, uh, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll use another sh a type, maybe some sort of blue. Anyway, these colors are so great. Hedgehog, and I have Madeline Tosh. This is a Tosh, Madeline Tosh. Why is that not focusing? Hello. There we go. Okay, so that's the color. And I thought, oops, dropped one. Anyway, and I thought this color was really cool. And these aren't typically colors I gravitate to towards because they're very warm. And warm colors, as I said, warm colors aren't the best, especially up around my face. But that's okay. I can use a cooler color here and then incorporate, oh, this is another one, a hedgehog, Villain. I love Villain. This is a, there we go. Look at that. Isn't that great? And this one, I love pink and orange together. Hey Gigi with your orange. Um, the pink and orange. And so, I don't know, I may make an and pullover and I'll somehow mix these crazy colors together. But I also, oh my gosh, when I was in New York, you guys, I saw Stephanie from Asylum Fibers. She's so sweet. Um, I ordered some yarn from her for a pad, uh, for a, um, a uh, what's that called? A, oh, the As If Tea, I think it's called. And because I left the Andrea Maori event early that Saturday night that I was in New York, Stephanie's texting me, oh my God, how am I going to get your, your yarn to you? And I thought, oh, I, I had forgotten about it. I was worried, you know. Anyway, so we texted back and forth. It turns out she works like a half a block from where I was staying. So I just ran over to her office and picked up my yarn. This yarn is called I'm Alive. It is a DK weight, but I did buy some mohair as well, of course. So here, let me show you. And I think I also bought a fingering weight because I'll show you later um, what I was thinking when I bought the fingering weight as well. But this is the color, I'm Alive. Here's the color. It's kind of a salmon, a, a, um, salmon, what do you call it, salmon? And here's the mohair. It's so pretty. So this is intended for the as if tea, 
but you know, you guys, you know how we are, right? You have it in mind, oh, I want this yarn for this pattern, and then you see something else and you think, oh, maybe I'll change my mind and I'll, you know, I'll buy more yarn for that and I'll test this up. And plus, I'm always testing out. I take patterns and I cannibalize them and add a lot of changes, and so I start thinking about all the colors I can mix in. So who knows what I'll actually do with this yarn. Stay tuned. You never know what I'll do. Next up, I saw on Instagram Nancy from Getting Pearly With It. She works out of Nitty City in uh, uh, the Upper West Side of New York. And we met during Vogue Knitting Live. She's so sweet. She was very, very kind to me. She let me hang out in their booth for a little while during Vogue Knitting Live. And they were so busy, but she was so, so nice. So this pattern, this is called the My Boy Lollipop uh, sweater. I'm sure you've seen it on her Instagram feed. And let me remind you, I only have a black and white printer, so th this is not a good representation. That's the sweater. My Boy Lollipop. So I haven't gotten far, but I'm working on a cal, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, but I couldn't resist. I have had this yarn for, I think, since last, since last year's LA Yarn Crawl. The yarn is by Knit Stitch. They're found on Etsy, and this color is called Assassin. Here's the label. Knit stitch. This is the colorway. Right, blacks and pinks. So I couldn't stand it. I had to cast on Nancy's little the the um, my boy lollipop tea. Uh, you know it's funny. I wasn't a fan of knitting in the round, nor top down. And I think my preference is still pieces, knitting in pieces, but I'm kind of getting hooked on knitting in the round. These, um, because some of the tops that I'm making are, I guess they're not super challenging. They're, they're great, they're interesting, but they're not, I don't know, there's something, the construction actually works really well in the round. So I'm so happy to be doing, uh, that I'm challenging myself to knit in the round more and get better at it. Of course, what I will do is once I get to the body part, I will put in faux seams, those little purl stitches. You put one purl stitch on each side to create a faux seam, and that sort of mimics, uh, it gives it a little structure. Um, oh, but on Rachel of Born and Raised, on the Anne pullover, I tried to do that. It does not work because of the way the lace, yeah, it doesn't work. I did it. I won't show you. And it doesn't show up much, but I did it. And I shouldn't have. I didn't do it on my previous Ann pullover. And so the bodice looks really great. And this one looks great. And you don't notice the mistake. I notice the mistake. My little pearl bumps go around the body just because of the way the lace work works. How you knit it. And I should have realized that, and I just, I didn't, and I'm looking at it, and I thought, ugh, I'm not, I, I just couldn't rip it out, and I thought, okay, design element, design element, right? We just make a design element out of it. So, this, uh, so, yeah, I don't have much of this, but here's my cast on. Oh, see here, remember I told you I do a huge long tail? Because when I'm done with this top, I will come around then and do my slip stitch crochet all the way around. And I may, this one I can probably do from the front of the work, not the inside. So I don't have much, but it's coming along really well. I love the pattern. It's well written. Nancy, thank you so much. I'm excited. I am not, not switching skeins every two rows. I just, I don't mind pooling. I think sometimes pooling 
adds a great effect. And I'm too lazy to bother with the extra strands and dealing with it, and so I'm not doing that. Are you guys, is anyone else out there with me on that? I thought I would be much further along, but as you know, when you travel and you get home and there's a lot of catch up to do and it's tax season, so I needed to finalize all my tax things, which I had done before I went on the trip. But then when I got back, the accountant had, uh, the CPA had questions for me um, and I just need to finalize all of that. And so I have not done quite as much knitting as I would like. Plus, I got a little sidetracked with my, with my, um, my boy Lollipop from getting pearly with it. It's so bad, isn't it? No wonder we don't finish anything and they, they sit in our whips pile forever. So this is where I'm at. It's so dark, but you can see my decreases. Right, I'm decreasing. I'm almost done with the decreases. And I'm using, are any of you participating in that cal, the Roselle Tea Cal by Patty Lyons? Uh, yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm almost done. I have a few more decreases to make. And then I think I might knit a couple of rows and then I will start the, um, the bind off for the underarms. Christy, I'm so jealous. I, th she's I think she's already done with her front piece. And I'm not, but that's okay. Uh, but as I said, you guys, if you haven't, and you can still participate, or you don't even have to participate, buy the pattern and you have access to all the little tips and tricks. I don't consider myself an expert knitter. I mean, I'm a decent knitter, but I most certainly do not think I know everything. And so um, I was pleasantly surprised that Patty's tutorials are super helpful and there are techniques that you can apply to any garment. And because, as you know, I like to tinker and kind of do my own, take a pattern and then do my own thing and just knit it up, uh, these are tech the techniques I'm learning are super, super helpful for future garments. Uh, so it's well worth uh, that little bit of that small investment in the cal, even if you don't finish. There's just so many great tutorials. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Christy. A few people have asked me about making uh, that that I they would like a pattern for a couple of the things that I've done. I'm not there yet. Um, I as I've said, I do not consider myself a designer, although. <laughs> She's so sweet. The slow knitter. Do you watch her? On, do you watch her podcast? If you don't, check her out. She's very sweet. I'll link her below. And she was so sweet on Instagram. She said, "You know, you might not be ready to call yourself a designer, but you are designing for yourself." Oh, and someone on YouTube actually made that comment too. They said, "You know, if," but I don't know how to do sizing. I can only do things for myself, and I make mistakes and I frog them. And a lot of times, and I think I've mentioned before, I may knit about this much for things that I don't have a pattern for that I'm kind of winging it. I may knit 8 or 10 inches and I will wash it. I'll block it uh, just with a little bit of water, right? I'll soak this in water and let it dry and I will measure it to see if I'm on track with where I want to be, depending upon the fit that I want. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, it's I tear it out and start over again and cast on more or fewer stitches. And that's okay. So I'm very flattered that uh, some of you would like me to create patterns for a couple of things that I've designed, but I'm not quite there yet. So please be patient maybe one day um, and and I'm happy as I've said before I am happy contact me on Ravelry probably is the best place because we can talk a little more instead of on Instagram it's easier just to type long messages but if you're really interested I can help guide you through my uh, process and maybe that'll help but thank you so much. It's it's very flattering that uh, that some of you really like my little t 
tinkers and um, and <laughs> design. And speaking of which, so I posted a picture of a cowl on Instagram and I asked you guys what you thought it looked like. As you turn it around, right, you get different patterns throughout the cowl. So many thought it looked like uh, the strata, right, in the earth, if you cut the earth and you see stone and crystal or marble or whatever, the rock or sandstone, which definitely I think it does. One knitter thought this resembled um, the northern lights. Someone else thought it was like the, the gaseous rings of Saturn. So yeah, it can be any one of those things, can't it? Um, so let me tell you what happened. I'll tell you my process for that. So I had a lot of leftovers and I made this cowl a long time ago. I took some of the same yarns and I made this cowl sort of after the fact. It was almost done or close to finishing the last few inches and I wondered what would happen if I did short rows I mean, we know what happens, right? You get extra fabric. So I thought, well, what'll ha you know, what would it look like though in the cowl? So I did it, and I'm going to show you here a little bit. So here, it's a little tough to see because it's all one colorway, but you can sort of see in the center here, right, where it dips down. And in person, my husband looked down at it, and I guess that's why initially um, the, the other cowl, this one, I have called like Pacific Waves or Ocean Waves, because when my husband saw this one, when, when it was blocked and finished, and he looked down at it and he said, oh, it's almost like a drop of water had fallen on the yarn and the yarn sort of rippled out. And so it got me thinking, okay, well, let me try doing a lot of ripples. So I took yarns that didn't match, colors didn't match. So I experimented here. I will show you this. And I didn't do a lot of it, but I started playing with the yarn. Here, I'll show you a few different... Right, so you can start to see, let's see what this side looks like. Right, so you can see all the waves. I just knit this up as a sample, and then I, I did this. So I chose, um, I used three or four different yarns here only. And they are not, this is not created by the, by the yarn color ways themselves. This is all short row shaping. I do not use short rows as you typically do when you're trying to add length to the back of a sweater or raise your neckline. I don't do the short rows that way. I, I mix and match how I do the short rows and where I place them. And it's a little willy-nilly about my placement of it but yet there is a little bit of method to my madness because I don't want the cowl completely lopsided, right? If you do too many short rows on one side, it's going to grow a lot there and it'll be short on the other. Um, so I think, oh, and when I was flying to New York, I decided to use a few, like black, a couple different shades of pink, and then I threw in some bright yellow or neon yellow. So this one, that, here's that, and I'll show you, I'll give you a, a couple of different angles, alright, so here's another one. Thank you. 
I am beyond thrilled with how this comes out. Um, one subscriber asked me if it was difficult. It is not. It's not difficult, but you do kind of um, mostly, you know, you can watch YouTube videos, you can listen to audiobooks, you can do things, so it's easy enough. You just need to a little bit be aware of where you're putting your short rows, the placement of them, how many times you do it, how many times you make the short rows, and then you try to keep, the, you know, space them out somewhat evenly, but not exactly around the cowl. Um, so I will at some point, I'm not sure, maybe over the summer because we don't knit as much over the summer, uh, I'll try the hat. And actually, if you guys, if you're really helpful to me, would you rather have a recipe? Do you want me to do a tutorial? Uh, because then I'm going to have to, I'll have to sort of figure out how I will do that tutorial if we want to, you know, we can learn together here and do it that way. And then maybe what I can do is announce, okay, uh, we'll do maybe a live YouTube and um, I'm not sure if that works. So I will talk to some other YouTube people and see what the best way to approach it is. But if you guys will be helpful and let me know if you're even interested in learning this technique and if so if just a recipe would be helpful or a tutorial I'm guessing you'll probably want some sort of video tutorial I would like to thank all of you so much for subscribing and if you don't subscribe think about subscribing and as I said last time I guess I should be asking people for a thumbs up or thumbs down <clears throat> excuse me but as I said if you want a thumbs down please don't just move on thank you you know there's enough negativity in the world this is just a nice happy place to be and so I, I, you know let's let's keep the negativity elsewhere not here in our knitting community but if you like if you enjoy it and you want to subscribe great and give it a thumbs up I'd appreciate it but I really, really appreciate all of you who do tune in, follow me on Instagram, and are now following me here. It, uh, it helps me, it, it gives me a little boost, because you never know, are, are people watching, do they care, do I have anything to bring to the table? There are so many YouTube channels out there about knitting. That's why I haven't done any tutorials because there are so many highly, highly, highly skilled knitters and crocheters that I just don't feel I can add anything to that. So I'm really here as, you know, it's fun. Let's look at the patterns. Let's look at the yarn. It's really great. Oh yeah, I changed this. I changed that. And isn't this great and fun? You know, I didn't go to design school. I didn't, I, you know, I don't know color theory. I have my own theories, but who knows if they always work. They're fun. So I really, really appreciate you guys commenting that, you know, if you like the podcast, if you find something interesting or funny, because, you know, who knows? I don't want to bore everyone to death. If I get that boring, you better tell me so I can, you know, pull the plug. I guess that's it for today. I'm going to edit this, and if it's horrible, I guess I'll be back to the drawing board. Okay, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for your support. Happy knitting and crocheting, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. So we're coming on, well, we've got past your five-year anniversary. What house are you in? Harry Potter House. The Harry Potter, oh, the Harry Potter House. So I like to fancy myself a Gryffindor, but I'm probably a Hufflepuff. <laughs> Do you like surprises? Most of the time. I don't have one for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is Untangled. This was just released Friday. And Lisa, who is Indian Tangled, who got this whole event rolling, she asked me if I could do a design for the weekend, and she has La Bienname, which is one of my favorite yarns to use. Both of these are La Bienname. 
And so for this weekend, I am teaching a couple brioche classes, which is my absolute favorite thing to teach. My goal is to make all of you obsessed with brioche, whether you want to or not. 